check one two one two. We live, baby. Come, come, come on. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Can you can you can you hear me now? Oh, let's go. <laughs> it's your boy Big Chew, the voice of the beat. You know what I want? Blaze up! Come on, Blaze up! It's a beat for me. Wah 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 wah
uh, Cassie suing him and him basically going, you know what? Let's just not even go that far. Let me just settle. That opened the door and a floodgate for other people to come out and also say, you know what? Screw it. We're going to try to get you too. And here we are now. You guys know I went live yesterday and talked about Diddy uh, amongst other, other topics. But today we're going to talk about strictly Diddy. That's all we doing is Diddy today. All day, Diddy, Diddy, Diddy. And um, I want you guys to take a look at this home, at Diddy's home, after it was raided. Uh, it's a few things we're going to discuss, but I want to show you guys this at, at first. Let's take a look at the home after it has been raided. This ain't that, that much older. This just came out not maybe about 15, 20 minutes ago, tops. Well, 25 minutes ago, according to this. Let's go take a look at Diddy's home after it's been raided. Let me back it up so you guys can see. Now, this video doesn't have sound. As you can see, they have completely ransacked the safes, the house, and everything around there, right? And that's probably because they were looking for something that caused them to have to look through all of this stuff. Now, if they were looking for golf balls, they wouldn't have to tear down the doggone kitchen in the living room. But if they're looking for something, in my opinion, such as evidence, I think that that's what this is. They were looking for evidence. That's why they went through safe. That's why they went through all of these other things, because they need computer stuff, hard drives, film. Remember the guy in the video? I mean, in the um, the boy Lil Rob in the lawsuit says Diddy has cameras all over. Remember, he said that. He said Diddy's got cameras all over. He said, so I'm pretty sure, you know, everything that I got has been taped. Well, this would make sense why the feds have come through and ransacked the crib like that. Now, to me, as a billionaire, the place being trash is the least of Diddy's worries. Diddy can probably, you know, pay a service to come in there and have that shit ship shop tip top shape in no time. I think that um you know the 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 trashing of the place is kind of messed up but it's not his biggest worry. I believe his biggest worry is what they found. And this is also my belief why they are looking for it. Now, uh Cassie's lawyer had made a, a statement we talked about that yesterday saying hey we're on the right side of justice da 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 da. You had the boy little Rob with his lawsuit talking about they gripping anuses and all of that. Uh he got he on a couch with Cuba Gooden Jr. You know, a whole heap of things. And I'm over here saying, well, maybe that's the evidence they looking for. And then it dawned on me. I said, hold on, Vu, wrap your head up because you got to go into profit mode. You know what I'm saying? So I say, well, maybe, just maybe, they are looking for evidence or trying to destroy evidence. Because you got to keep in mind, it's a lot of people that have been through the, the house of Diddy, the house that Daddy built. Let's talk about it. Y'all acting like Diddy only hung with the low lives of the industry. Diddy done hung with the best of them. Hell, Prince Harry has been accused of being around there at the mansion as well. You know what I'm saying? So I'm thinking, are they looking for evidence and or destroying evidence? Who knows? This is all alleged. I'm just a conspiracy theorist. Don't pay me no mind. My head wrap. You know what I'm saying? It's the, it's the ancestors asking me to ask you all this, you know? But at the end of the day, Diddy has not been placed under arrest. He has not, um, he has not been, uh, a warrant has not been issued for Diddy. None of these things. So it, it begs me to ask the question, what is really going on? Now, the only person that I am hoping and praying with two, with hands crossed like this, that is taken down in this raid is TD. Take that, take that. Oh yes. If TD is taken down in this raid, I will have felt like I have unlocked a new level of life. Yes, I need TD up out of here. I need TD in the pottery house up out of here. Now, I know the pottery house probably not going to go nowhere. I know that. That's how they go. You know what I'm saying? Them church people, they, they lawyer and faithful to that building. And they think they're faithful to the Lord, but they really be faithful to that nigga behind the pulpit in the building. Neither here nor there. If we can get Operation TD, take down TD, uh, two birds with one stone, I believe we will take a win uh, by the end of this doggone year, you know. But like, uh, um, uh, like uh, 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 what's his name? Cat Williams said, this is the year of exposure. This is the year of exposure. Now, they done trashed daddy's house. Look, look at daddy's house. Girl, let me turn this AC on. Hold on. They done trashed daddy's house. Hold on. Let me turn this AC on.
I know you guys see it. They have crashed the crib. And I'm wondering who all is on the docket. Who all is on the docket? If you have not already, please like the video, you guys. This is just news of 25 minutes ago. TMZ, of course, is the first on the scene. I believe that Diddy sent that to them. I don't think that the people who told the house up was like, hey, TMZ, by the way, grab this and put this out. I'm pretty sure a rep or somebody from Diddy's team had came out there and was like, y'all, look, put this out here so they can see how they trashed my mansion. Nigga, house is as big as a goddamn mall. And y'all, girl. The, the trash is the liberal, the least thing he worried about. What kind of tea he got on these doggone tapes and all of that? That's the, that's, that's the, you know what I mean? I think his lawyer sent it to me, though. I believe his lawyer sent it too because why, you know what I mean? Like, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't behoove the people of the Colts and the FBI and, and the Capitol letter people to send it. I think they looking for some hard drives. I think they looking for some, some tapes. I don't know if people still have tapes, but Diddy might have tapes from the 90s. They got the clear people all up in arms. The clear people now bringing up Justin Bieber. We already been new about Justin Bieber down at Daddy's house. You guys hit the like button. 648 people in the chat and only 326 likes. Please hit the like button to let the people know we around here. Joseph, now we got to do this part. This is very imperative. Y'all know what imperative mean? Important. This is extremely important and imperative that you hit the like button. But like I told y'all, Cassie was the beginning. Cassie, Cassie walked away with some money. And this is my conspiracy theory. Now, I don't know this to be fact. This is all my theory. They grabbed Cassie and said, look, bitch, you want this money? And she said, hell yeah. And they said, all you got to do is sue the nigga. He going he gonna to cave because you going to come with the teeth. Now, that's going to start us from doing from that into all of this that we see. Now, remind you, he was beefing and, uh, and suing the people down there uh, at the, the liquor people, the De Leon people. And he had beef with Disney because, remember, he was um, the Joker. I also believe that Diddy is the fall guy. If y'all don't believe that Diddy has been partaking in this type of into, uh, environment, with other clears in, in of of a uh, of stature, then you crazy as well. Just like I feel like R. Kelly was the fall guy. Not saying that they don't deserve what they got, because I don't know. But I'm saying that these people are taking the lick. Allegedly, in my opinion. In my opinion, allegedly. But this is the house, you guys. I know, I don't know if you guys seen this already, but this is the house. This is the house. So they done went up in there. And got Diddy, brother love. And you know, they say he on the run, but technically, legally, he's not on the run because he didn't, he's not wanted for anything. If you really think about it, he's technically not on the run because they don't, you know what I mean? They don't want him for anything. Now, I read these um documents to y'all before, and we're gonna get into the most updated documents. Shout out to William for sending me the, the most updated uh T. But we had some um documents before from the boy Lil Robs. Uh, situation and then we also had the situation with um what do you call it with um is this it no you also had the situation with uh cassie and you know a host a plethora of other people let me see no nah, this oh this one from the man Adi. oh let's go get it let's go get it let's let's just go you know listen to me I'm going to pause this. Hold on. Let me pause this. Before we get into this, we're going to get the mother documentation. But let me say this, you guys. A lot has been going on. And like I said, on top of a lot of distractions that's been happening, and I believe that as well, I believe that um, the powers that be are, they're, they're, they're punishing Diddy. Like, nigga, you really thought we was playing? They said he done sold all his shares to Revolt and all these other places. And it makes all the sense in the world. Now, there were alleged uh, rumors that King Combs or Christian Combs was in jail or in prison. But here we go. They got a photo saying that's a lie. Look. Hold on. I don't mean it like that. Because me and our Christian's girlfriend put the videos on the ground of them tonguing each other down. I don't know if y'all can see this, but it's weird. It's very weird. Oh, he looked just like Diddy. Look at his tit. Look. Look at his mouth. He got that Diddy mouth. Ugh. Yeah, it might be an old video. 
You know, them hoes do that type shit, you know, type shit, like on some Krishan type shit, you know, but we're not talking about her today. Listen, there has been a lot of updates, a lot of things coming through, um, and we need to get into these things. Now, we're going to also not only get into this, we're going to get into, oh, let me X this out. we're going to get into some old stuff that hadn't already came up. Diddy has once again taken over the news. Now, in other news, people are bringing up Jay-Z. Jigga, Jigga, what's my mother in name? Jigga, and who I'm rolling with, huh, my niggas. But we ain't seen or heard from Jigga since the jig was up over there on Diddy. Now, the people is trying to see what the fuck going on. You know what I mean? We seen the, the churn with, in handcuffs. That don't mean nobody was arrested. I know it was some rumors out that people were arrested, but that was never proven to be so. Young Miami over there talking about, they said, where Young Miami? She said, right, chill. And I'm over here saying, girl, if you don't go lay your ugly ass down, how that boy had already said that um, your cousin RAP'd him, if you get what I'm saying. Invader said, get Jay and the wish lady. Ciao. Cha 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 cha. Let's get into um. Hold on, I want to get into a couple other things before we get into the backstory on this thing. We're not gonna go through the whole backstory, but what we will do is go through some things that you know that's kind of pertinent to what's going on. And like I told y'all, I keep telling y'all, this shit is bigger than that girl. This is bigger than th th this shit. It's big. That's all I'm going to see. I, and, and again, I'm a bit of a conspiracy theorist, so a lot of people might be like, Voodoo, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. And you might be right. But I'll just say this. You guys, hit the like button. Only 423 likes, 700 people, or 800 people in the chat. You guys, please hit the like button. Please hit the like button. Please hit the like button. Now, everything is coming out that what's been going on, right? Let's get into um them just, the clears just finding out about Diddy having daddy camp over there with, what's that boy's name? with justin bieber let's go pull this up now the clears are involved you know it's one thing when we just over here talking about it on youtube all of the world news is talking about this in the collapse bridge unfortunately but let's go get this footage hold on justin he's in you ever seen the movie 48 hours right now he's having 48 hours with diddy him and his boy um they're having the times of their lives like 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 you know where we hanging out and what we doing First and foremost, look at that weird ass smile on, on this baby face. This child is sitting here thinking, mama, please come save me. And I keep telling y'all, their mamas be selling them to these people. Look at this child. And I know he a grown man now, but look at this child. As, as Diddy over there talking about, oh, we about to spend the next 48 hours as a 15-year-old's dream. This child is over there saying, somebody, please help me, God, please. Please help me, God. He looks extremely uncomfortable, Shayla. It's weird. He was terrified, in my opinion. Very nervous smile. And Diddy is over here showing him calls, talking about they're about to spend the next 48 hours together. As he reiterates that he had custody of, uh, of uh, uh, Usher around that age. Girl. Um, we, we can't really Look. disclose... But um, it's definitely a 15-year-old's dream. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed the Usher. He signed the Usher. I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when you know, he, he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, <laughs> and yeah, and, um, and, and, yeah and, and we gonna go full. Buck full crazy. Going crazy. Justin, he's in. You ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Let me say this, you guys. Even, even if, let's just say, let's for all intents and purposes, I'm not saying this is so, but let's just say for all intents and purposes, all this other stuff is cap. Let's just say everything else is cap, even though we don't believe it's cap, but let's just say it's cap. Let's just say that. What is a man Diddy's age spending any type of long periods of time with a child? What, what how that go? Rather it was Usher, rather it was uh Justin Bieber, what the hell? 
Then ain't Justin Bieber from Canada. He probably ain't seen this many Negroes up front like this and up close. But his mammy probably done sold him off. You see what I'm saying? Right, Rao, you. Where's Chris Hansen? Where the hell is Chris, An Chris Hansen? What is going on? There's nothing. I didn't listen. I'm going to be honest. I didn't like it when Michael Jackson did it. What the fuck is you doing making a fucking carnival outside your front yard to have churn? I didn't like it when he did it. And just like Latoya Jackson said, that's my brother. I love him. It's true. But what 35 year old man is doing hanging out with young boys, this, you know, for long periods of time. And we love Mike, you know, black folks, Negroes. We would never tell the clear people that we thought something was weird. We will always hold fast that Michael is innocent. And to an effect, he is innocent because the feds ain't find nothing allegedly. But at the end of the day, none of us sending our churn over there to Never Never Land. Well, some of us might. But you know what I mean? We ain't sending our churn to Never Never Land after we run around here telling people that Michael Jackson is innocent. We damn sure wasn't sending our daughters by R. Kelly after we say he was just stepping in the name of love. Nah. Girl, it's been a time. Let's go get some more evidence, girl. The clears are on it now. The clears are on it. Starting to act different, huh? No, you, you, ain't, you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Well, I mean, you haven't. I mean, you try to get in contact with me, you know, through all my, you know, you know, partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But you, you never really got my number, so. Right. Okay. My number. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. You. Starting to act different, huh? Hmm. You, no, you, no, ain't, no. you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Well, I mean, you haven't. I mean, you try to get in contact with me, you know, through all my, you know, you know, partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But you, you never really got my number, so. Right. Okay. My number. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm Ladies in the chat, you ever had an ex or, you know, a dude you used to deal deal with, even if he won, y'all wasn't official. And um, you you ducked him on purpose. You literally stopped answering the calls, stopped seeing this nigga. You, everywhere, if this nigga was over here, you went over there. And when you finally run across this nigga, even though you've been hiding from this nigga, the nigga go, oh, you ain't been hitting me up, huh? It's I can't get in touch with you. What you be like? Oh, yeah, well, oh, um, you know, I've been working. You know, they had me working overtime at the job. You know, them churn. Uh, uh, my baby was sick. Bitch, we'll come up with anything, would not we? Tell the truth. You 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 run across that nigga you've been ducking for all them years. Shit, that nigga come up. Oh, where you been? I've been looking for you, hiding. You ducking and hiding. I ain't, I, I call your phone. You don't answer. Oh Lord, my bad. I got baptized. And then you know I'm a Jehovah Witness, so when we get baptized, we gotta stay fasting for forty days. So that's why I couldn't really, you know, call you back. So my bad. You know, uh, me being a Jehovah's Witness Muslim, you know, we don't eat pork and we fast, and we have to cut the world off so i'm sorry but yeah put my number in your phone that's what it, that's what this is giving to me that's what this is giving to me hell yeah gemini excuses on excuses look look at diddy you ain't, you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out well i mean you haven't i mean you try to get in contact with me you know through all my you know you know partners and whatnot mm -hmm. but you, you never really got my number so right okay number yeah yeah I'm, I'm yeah yeah Starting to act different, huh? Girl, I know what I'm looking at. I know what I'm looking at. Hey, Taylor Glover, glad you can make it. I definitely feel protective of her. Um, it was hard for me being that young and being in the industry, not knowing where to turn and everyone, you know, telling me they love me and, you know, just turn their back on you in a second. Um, I don't want her to 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 lose it i don't want her to you know go through anything i went through i don't wish that upon anybody so um yeah if she ever needs me i'm i'm just a call away uh, I, let me tell y'all something y'all thought that nickelodeon shit is the only place this type of shit happened them churn be telling y'all what the hell going on you heard him he said i wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy I wish jail on a lot of my worst is enemies, preferably the Christian animals. Oh, yes. But you know niggas that been to jail will be like, I don't wish that on my worst enemy. I do. Hell yeah. Lock them hoes up in prison. Do you hear me? I do. But this boy 
reverting back to childhood is literally saying, you know, I feel overprotective. I would never send my child or send, no, I wouldn't wish, wish this on my worst enemy. Look at how he cowards away and how he like shrinks himself when he speaks about this. This is big. Look. I don't want her to, to, to lose it. I don't want her to, you know, go through anything I went through. I don't wish that upon anybody. So, um, yeah, if she ever needs me, I'm, I'm just a call away. It's giving Macaulay Culkin. Ever since that little nigga went, ah, we, that nigga ain't been right since. Ever since that little clear boy was out there talking about, Oh, we he ain't been right since. He looked like he hides the cost of living Monday through Monday through Sunday. It's giving Macaulay Culkin. We all laughed and kikied and slapped knees and, and, and slapped five when that little boy was home alone. And the whole time we missed the whole cue. Ah, that's not funny. I'm not laughing like that. You see what I'm saying? That's not how I'm laughing. You know, I was just thinking about the movie when he did it. It wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. So don't come on here dragging. But you know what I'm saying? What did Diddy do to Justin? Child, allegedly the same thing he did to Ursha. Allegedly. Damn boy, damn boy. Oh, now this the little clear girl. We got to get her on here. This the little clear girl, and I, I I talked about this too on my live. I told y'all, I said, who allowed this Negro to adopt this clear girl? A clear girl. She looked so uncomfortable. She looked like she was child s trafficked. Look. Look at this little girl. Look at this little girl. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah. Everyone, introduce yourself. My name's Ava. I'm a Scorpio. No, no, no. What's your last name? Oh, Ava. Wait a minute, Ava. Hold on. Can you pause? Ava looked like she was doing a dating profile, wasn't she? My name is Ava. I'm a Scorpio. Scorpio? What child introduces themselves like this? That, I ain't bullshitting. Think about what I'm telling y'all. Don't it give dating profile? My name is Ava. I'm a Scorpio. And then he her up. No, 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 no. What the fuck you mean? What you be having this girl in front of the camera doing? Girl, watch this. I ain't bullshitting. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah. Everyone in introduce yourself. My name's Ava. I'm a Scorpio. No, no, no. What's your last name? Oh, Ava Combs. What's your oh. other last name? Ava Baroni. Ava Baroni Combs? Yes, it's, it's breaking news. Diddy adopted a white child. <laughs> I, want you, I want you to tell them the story about how I adopted you. you but you still have beautiful parents that, but you're my child also. But please, please tell the story. So, I was <laughs> on the streets. <laughs> And then Papa Combs decided what? that he would like to be a caring man. So then he saw me and decided to pick me up and said to come inside and play with his kids. Yeah. Do this little girl look like a little girl that he found on the streets? Put a one in the chat if this little girl looked like she was found on the streets. Put a two in the chat. If this little girl looked like she was taken from somewhere, it don't get me found on the streets. Put a one in the chat if you believe this child was found on the streets. Put a two in the chat is hell no. I need to see something. Now, I know I'm not crazy now. Look at this child. Found on the streets. Bitch, please. I know a stray when I see one, and this ain't giving straight. This ain't giving a pit bull mixed with a Labrador. And I'm not calling the little girl a dog, but y'all know how dogs be. This ain't fine. This ain't giving pit bull mixed with lab. This is giving a uh, prize dog. You don't just find them. Full-blooded pit bulls and full-blooded Rottweilers, you know, uh, uh, with the papers. This is, and I'm not calling the little girl a dog, but you know what I'm saying? Certain shit you just don't find on the street. And where is the little girl? That's another question. Said to come inside and play with his kids. Yeah. <laughs> girl. Jesus. Now, is this yeah, yeah. Introduce yourself. My name's Ava. 
I'm a Scorpio. No, no, no. What's your last name? Uh, Ava Combs. What's your other uh, last name? Ava Barone. Ava Barone Combs? Yes, it's, it's breaking news. Diddy adopted a white child. I want, you, I want you to tell them the story about how I adopted you. We, but you still have beautiful parents that, but you're my child also. Please, please tell the story. So, I was <laughs> on the streets. <laughs> And then Papa Combs decided <laughs> that he would like to be a caring man. So then he saw me and decided to pick me up Look what he's and needed. said to come inside and play with his kids. Yeah. <laughs> My baby, 21 years old. My, I have a child that's 21 years old. And if I were to get her up here right now and say, introduce yourself to these people, her name and her, her sign would not be the first two things she said. I'm a, I'm a, scor a Scorpio. Who does? It's given tender. Now, they don't know where the child at. All I know is the clears have taken a hold of this, and they don't too particularly appreciate what the fuck been going on. And you know, once the clears get a hold, you know what I'm saying? Ava, his daughter, best friend, well, where's the daughter? Once the clears get a hold, we got a different story now. Now, I want to show y'all a couple of more things before we get into this background tea, because this is very important. This is extremely imperative that we know what the fuck going on. And not to say... You know, because everybody's innocent until proven guilty, allegedly. But something is going on. My spidey senses are tingling. And I believe, like I said, it's bigger than Diddy. Diddy is the fall guy. Now, who all going to get caught up in the BS? That's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother story. But the clears have caught a hold to it. And I don't think they too, they too particularly like it. And then look at this. Look at this. See, this is why they asking where Jay-Z at. Jay-Z done canceled the Rock Nation brunch. Y'all seen that? Nigga been brunching for the last 40 years. Now all of a sudden the brunch is over. Yeah, hold on. I gotta make sure y'all can see it. Now, this nigga Jay been Rock Nation brunching this shit out. He been brunching this shit out for the last 40 years. All of a sudden, this year, the brunch is canceled. And, and Twitter is on this nigga head. Do you hear what I'm trying to say to you? Twitter is on this nigga head. Twitter say, where you at, Jigga? Where you at, Jigga? Look at Jigga. It's 2020, y'all. Yeah. And it's different than when it was 2016. You know, the game has been elevated. Um, 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 as we can tell, there's, there's no expense being spared. We had a black billionaire's lunch. It's 2020, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. And it's different than when it was 2016. You know, the game has been elevated. Um, 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 as we can tell, there's, there's no expense being spared. We had a black billionaire's lunch. They say Jay-Z met him before he fled. Hmm. Wouldn't surprise me none. Wouldn't surprise me none. You get it? Girl, 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 girl. It's... <sighs> Let me make sure I get through everything. Um, let's see him pacing. We already, I said we was gonna talk about this. This is Diddy pacing back and forth. Now, I ain't gonna lie, it's giving stage because why and who the hell is pacing, di getting Diddy knock knee that pacing back and forth? Now, this is Diddy pacing back and forth, looking worried. You got you better believe this part too. Let me say this to you guys. You better believe that this child s trafficking thing is real throughout the entire industry. It's not just Nickelodeon. It's not just uh Disney. 
It's not, it's, it is, and it is a billion trillion, I'm sorry, dollar industry. People have been telling you guys this forever, forever. And people want to act surprised when we hear it in this segment of it or this portion of it. It is, that is what they do. They have a doctrine. Listen to me. These people, the people who run these industries, I don't going to say their names. Y'all know who I'm talking about. There's a doctrine that tells them that it is okay to do what they do. It's just that the laws don't agree. So we got to start understanding that. There's a doctrine that says, hey, you can do this because it's in your doctrine. And I'll give you a hint. There are religious doctrines. And I'll give you another hint. If you're religious, it's in your doctrine. I'll give you another hint. If you're religious, it's in your doctrine. Nah? I don't care what religion you are. If you are religious, it is in your doctrine. So I'm saying all that to say, and this is not to hang nobody to the pole or nothing, but what I'm saying is this is an, an industry. Epstein wasn't the only one. Epstein wasn't the only one. This nigga so allegedly unalived himself. All we seen was a body bag come out and then no fuel, no nothing. He just gone. Girl, bye. Y'all believe that nigga dead? I got a wheel to sell you outside right now swimming. All he need is food and water for the next 30 days. I'll give him to you for $1.99 a pound per shipping. Girl, please. So now this knock need ass motherfucker around here all oh, pacing back and forward looking worried. Now, granted, he's not under arrest, but I do feel like as a father, leaving your children, even if my children wasn't under arrest, if I seen my child with handcuffs, girl, now you done got me out the bushes. I need to come see because not, not my baby, not my child, not my child. Mm -mm. It just keeps growing and growing all Diddy B tweets. Let me go see. Thank you, Yusuf. Let me go see. You know, I can't scroll through Twitter. With y'all on here, because Twitter, you'll be over there thinking, you know, woo de woo de woo and the next thing you know, it's bam, 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 you know? Next thing you know, your whole page gone. Now, look at somebody set to testify. Look at this. Former Motown, let me share this. Uh, now, people ready, you know people about to start snitching, right? Y'all do know that, right? Of course, everybody about I would snitch, nigga. You wouldn't have to uh, handcuff me. I'm out here. What, what are you talking about? Oops, former Motown record CEO, Ethiopia, Habter, whatever her last name is, to testify against Diddy in exchange for being dropped from trafficking lawsuit. I have personal knowledge of the facts. If called upon as a witness, I could and would competently testify now she's mentioned in this lawsuit y'all remember the lawsuit from oh boy let me go get it y'all remember the lawsuit from um from the from the dude who said his anus was grabbed or his anus or something like that is it is it here let me see no not this one hold on i got the lawsuit because we was going through it before let me go to sent because i know i sent it to miss parker Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We're going to go through this lawsuit because this is where a lot of this is stemming from. And the fact that Cassie's lawyer has something to say told me everything I needed to know. This shit is bigger than Nino Brown. If Diddy go down, he taking the whole hood with him. Allegedly. Okay. This shit is bigger than Nino Brown. Okay. Now, let's go get this lawsuit. Also, uh, while I'm looking for this lawsuit, you guys, please, if you have not already liked the video, please and thank you. Like the video. Please like the video. Like the video. Um, What else I want to say? Uh, da, 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 da. Let me do two. Hold on. Because I know I sent it to Miss Parker. Did I send it in this one? No, let me go back. What I did with it. Hold on. We're going to go get this lawsuit because this is very important. While we're doing this, while I'm looking for this, let me go get you something else while I'm looking for this. Hold on. These people is about to start snitching. Y'all know that, right? They definitely about to start snitching. Without a doubt. 
without a freaking doubt. And Diddy ass is going to be in trouble. Because I ain't going to lie, if it was me, I'm snitching and I said what I said. And I said what I said. Hold on. Girl, Twitter been cutting up too. Matter of fact, let me refresh uh, what Yusef was saying about uh, the tweets. Let me refresh. Let me, I don't want to scroll while I'm on Twitter. So let me not have you guys up. Let me go grab the uh, the tweets. <sighs> this is this is sad. This is crazy. But again, I don't feel sorry for Diddy because I know the amount of people that Diddy has affected, if it makes sense. The amount of people Diddy has affected, especially black people, he's ruined lives. He's done a lot of things, you know what I mean, to black people. And I'm not going to be one of those people. And I'm not playing this leaked audio because there's leaked audio of Meek Mill allegedly and Diddy. But I'm not going to play that. Uh, I would like to keep my channel. But if you guys would like to hear that, it is on Twitter. It is on Twitter. But yeah, listen. And it's a whole bunch of this. Oh, my God. I don't want to play that. What was I saying? Here, is this the, the flight log, the flight data stuff? Let me go get this. Hold on. Sorry, guys. I hope you didn't hear that. All right. Let's go get this while I look at, while I look for the rest of this paperwork. Um, I'm going to share. The internet has been set ablaze. Everybody is looking at this thing. Let me not play the music. Sorry, I don't want to play the music. The internet has been set ablaze. Everybody's trying to see. Now, this is Diddy allegedly on the flight. I know that's not him on the flight while he's on the run. But listen, and again, he's not on the run because legally he hasn't been charged with anything. So we got to make sure we're clear when we say that. You guys like the video. 672 likes and 1.2 thousand people liking. Please like the video. Please like the video. It's free. Please, it's a free way to let me know and let the people on YouTube know y'all around here Joseph with me. Now, I like the video. Please and thank you. It would. It's greatly appreciative. Um, but it has been alleged that Diddy has been basically going around doing, you know. God knows what, trying to figure out his next move. Do I believe that Diddy um, is scared right now? Absolutely. Anybody anybody who who's anybody would be saying the same thing. Anybody who's anybody would be, would be doing the same thing. I would be fucking terrified if I was Diddy. Allegedly, Groovy kind of love. They, they chat. They allegedly, they said they was clapping cheeks. Now, I don't know this to be right. I'm just telling y'all what they said. Now, I wanted to share this with you guys, too. It says, while Diddy sells off Revolt TV shares to an anonymous buyer. Anonymous buyer, of course. So it goes on to say, uh, neighbors, Diddy is no longer tied to Revolt TV. According to TMZ, he has sold off all his shares to an interested buyer for an undisclosed sum. The, the company is allegedly still black owned, but the owner's identity remains private at this time. Now, how much sense does this make? How much sense does this make? Per the report, the new bosses wish to remain anonymous for the time being. However, an official announcement of who purchased Revolt TV will be made soon. So basically, they want the smoke surrounding Diddy to die down. So when it does, when it does, so it doesn't, I'm sorry, take away from their moment. Diddy stepped down as Revolt's chairman last November amid his Cassie lawsuit. It appears everything is going downhill. Now, I remind you, I keep telling y'all, even though these people are so-called billionaires and so-called millionaires and all this stuff, these people ultimately, ultimately, they still have, they don't have that type of cash money, liquid money. They don't have liquid money like you guys think they do. A lot of y'all might think, oh, well, it's a billionaire. He got, they don't, they can't go to the bank and pull out $30 million. That don't normally work like that. That's what I feel like, KWD. Why tell us then? I'm with you. Why tell us then? But my thing is, it's just like, they, they, I'm trying to find the right words. 
a lot of these billionaires are billionaires through assets, which is why when Kanye West, remember Kanye West? He was a billionaire. And then in days it was all taken away. It was because they were taking away his assets, his deals, his things like that. It doesn't necessarily mean that they have the money in the bank. So him settling for $30 million with Cassie, that probably drained him, which means he probably had to sell off a lot of his assets and a lot of his deals, you know, because in order for that, for him to be able to just fork over that type of money in cash, like, I, I, I you know, that just, and again, that's the, and a lot of people get excused or mis misused or miscommunicated with people's net worth and their actual liquid cash. Network just means what you own in assets. That's all that means. So if you own 10 houses, five Bentleys, and 50, 11 gyms or something, yeah, your network might be $40 million. But ultimately, when you go and, and put your debit card in, well, they, I don't know if they got debit cards, but whenever you go check your account, it may not say, it probably most nine times out of 10 won't say $40 million. That's with your assets. Diddy is a billionaire. Yes, through assets. And assets means deals, future deals, past deals, all these things, recurring income, all this stuff. But that doesn't necessarily mean he has that type of money to just fork over. So giving $30 million to Cassie was a lot, even for the billionaire. It just was, even for the billionaire. It was a lot even for the billionaire because nobody, a lot of people don't have that type of cash, which is why he's probably setting off his portion of Ciroc and his portion of this because he needs, now he needs the liquid cash. Not to mention, he's going to have to fight future cases. So he really needs the, the cash. He really needs the cash. You guys hit the like button if you have not already. 763 likes and 1.2 thousand in the chat. You guys, please hit the like button. Please hit the like button. Please hit the like button. Okay, it's free. Now, um, I wanted to go and get this. Hold on one second. I want to go read an article about the update of what's going on. Now, Diddy's lawyers had something to say. Let me go get it. Hold on. All right, let's go get this. It says, Sean Diddy Combs lawyers call raids an unprecedented ambush as he maintains rapper's innocence. This is the lawyer speaking now. Combs property were raided by federal agents this week in, midst, in the midst, I'm sorry, of several ongoing accusing, I'm sorry, lawsuits accusing the rapper of sex trafficking. All right. It says Sean Diddy Combs' lawyer is speaking out after two of the rapper's properties were raided by federal agents on Monday amid sex trafficking allegations filed in two lawsuits against the star. Now, let me also say this. A lot of people are going around with misinformation saying, oh, it was his New York, Miami, and L.A. No, it was just the Miami and the L.A. home. New York was the ones who started it, but they didn't raid his New York home. It was just the Miami and the L.A. home. It says, yesterday, there was a gross overuse of military-level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Cone's residence, said attorney Aaron Dyer in a statement to People. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Remember, I told y'all I believe he was the one sent them um, that video of the house being raided or maybe his team. It would only make sense. Why would the feds send the media how they trash the house. It just doesn't make sense, right? Even though that is typical in federal cases. He was stopped by Homeland Security. This is not, you know what I mean? The regular police. Dye explained that the Bad Boy Records founder who is currently facing five lawsuits accusing him of sexual assault was never detained, but spoke to and cooperated with authority, authorities throughout the ordeal. So that puts to bed the rest that, oh, well, he's on the run. He's not on the run. According to his attorney, he was very cooperative and spoke to him throughout the whole thing. According to them. Now, anybody's in the house, once they get in there, of course, they're going to be handcuffed and treated accordingly because it is now an active investigation. 
Despite media speculation, neither Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested, nor has the, their ability to travel been restricted in any way, added the lawyer. That puts that to rest. People were saying, oh, the boys were arrested. They were detained. I don't know if you guys know this. I used to watch a lot of cops. I'm not familiar with it per se, but I, I do watch a lot of cops. And I've seen a lot of times back in the day when they would pull somebody over there and say, am I arrested? They'd be like, you're just being detained. That's when I knew you could get cuffs on you and not necessarily be going to jail. All right. It says on Monday, Fox 11 broadcast aerial footage of Combs, two sons, Justin Combs, 30 and Christian Combs, 25 handcuffed outside their Beverly Hills home and speaking with authorities. Combs, meanwhile, was spotted at the Miami OPA Laka Executive Airport amid the home's raids on Monday while his private jet reportedly landed in Antigua. Okay, so they're saying that basically, uh, even though we was watching this whole thing go on at the crib, his jet was landed in Antigua. Then it says this unprecedented ambush paired with a with an advanced coordinated media presence leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in lawsuits added dire. So what, what the lawyer is trying to say is, girl, this is what happened. Girl, they they basically around here saying, you know, they, they setting my, my client up. They trying to get him guilty in the court of public opinion by sending y'all all of these doggone footages and all of this stuff just so y'all can just automatically say he guilty. But my client really innocent, but you know, that's the media. They're trying to set this all up for my client. I believe Sharon asked, was he tipped off? I believe he could have been. Because how would he know to just not be there? At none of the cribs? Unless it was just a big coincidence. Y'all know how I feel about coincidences. The statement concluded, there have been no findings of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. Following initial reports of home raids, a Homeland Security Investigations representative commented on the matter in a statement to people. Earlier today, Homeland Security Investigation, otherwise known as HSI, New York Executive uh, I'm sorry, executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from HSI Los Angeles, HSI Miami, and our local law enforcement partners. We will provide further information as it becomes available, said the representative. So um, they're basically saying that, hey, it was New York from New York, LA, Miami, and the local police that got together and said they was going to go inside this nigga's house. Now, let me say this. They have to get approval and a warrant signed by a judge before they do this. They have to do this. You don't just go busting in people's doors. This ain't the movies or the hood, because they do that in the hood all the time. But it's somebody of this caliber, you have to get stuff signed by the judge. And for them to go to a judge and say, hey, your honor, we need to raid this home, that home. We need to use all these resources. We need to grab all these tanks, weapons, woot de woot de woot and go down there. They have to have some compelling goddamn evidence. I'm just saying. It says, we will always support law enforcement when it seeks to prosecute those that have violated the law. Hopefully, this is the beginning of a process that will hold Mr. Combs responsible for his depraved conduct, wrote Wigdor. Now, that's Cassidy lawyer. Bitch, they want, uh, I told y'all they want this nigga head. I told y'all. I told y'all they want his head. I told y'all. I said this is bigger. I said it wasn't quite Clive. You know, Clive Davis, he get his back in blood. If if he had beef with Clive Davis, we'll be over there saying, it's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. You know, Clive get his back in blood. This ain't that and that ain't this. This is him them pissed off some people who want to humiliate him. Okay? So, Basically, now Cassie's lawyer is speaking out. So now that leads me to believe that Cassie's lawyer is in on this too. Even though they've already settled and got their money and went their ways. It seems to me everybody is joining forces like the damn Avengers to get Diddy down. Down goes Diddy is what it's given. 
In November 2023, Combs' former girlfriend, Cassandra Cassie Ventura, filed a lawsuit against him for allegations of RS trafficking and domestic violence, DV, on November 16th. The next day, they reached a settlement. Then on November 23rd, a woman, Lisa or Liza Gardner, I'm sorry, alleged that Combs and singer-songwriter Aaron Hall took turns aring her and a friend in New York City more than 30 years ago, according to documents obtained by people. Why haven't they picked up that goddamn predator? And I'm talking about Aaron Hall. He the type that brags. Why haven't they picked this Negro notches up? Somebody go get him. I don't know who I want him to arrest faster, him or Krishan. It goes on to say, Combs was then accused of essay by a third woman, Joy Dickerson Neal, in a lawsuit filed in New York County Supreme Court. On December 6th, a fourth person accused Combs of essay. The fourth plaintiff also accused him of S trafficking in gang R. That's the boy. On February 27th, Combs' former producer, oh no, this is him right here. On February 27th, Combs' former producer and videographer, Rodney Lil Rod Jones, filed a lawsuit in New York Federal Court. Jones alleged that um, for more than a year, the rapper SH drugged and threatened him. Jones is seeking $30 million in damage. Jones, he don't have it, baby. He gave it all to Cassie. He don't have it. Combs issued a blanket denial of allegations against him in a statement to people in December. Enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and my legacy, he said. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday, added Combs at the time. Let me be absolutely clear. Well, that's kind of impossible, but let's go on. I did not do any of those awful things being alleged. I am. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. Now, that's Diddy. So, it's, you know what it's giving to me, you guys? It's giving to me. This is what it's giving to me. It is giving to me that uh, the, uh, my brother Combs, um, you in danger, boy. Molly, you in danger, girl. Sean, you in danger, bro. Them people want your head on the swivel. That's got to be a time. Them people want your head on the swivel. Now, I don't know who you made mad. Uh, now, granted, you got to be honest about these things as well. They are not going to, they are not going to prosecute the clear people in the people in, in, a, in a position of power the way they're going to prosecute him because they're going to make an example out of him because that's typically how that goes. That normally goes just like that. But at the end of the day, you in danger, bro. You in danger. How they say, Miley, you in danger, girl. You in danger, Sean. Sean Puffy, Puffy Sean. You in danger, bro. Them people want your head all off the swivel. That's what they want. They want your head off the swivel now. Now, shout out to my um subby William, who sent me some more teas and docket information. Let me see if I can uh, make this bigger. Let me see. I want to see if I can make this bigger so we can see. All right, let's go get it, you guys. <sighs> Let me open them all so I'll have them all open. And we're going to get into these documents, okay? We're going to get into them. Yes, ma'am. We're going to get into them. And I'm sorry if they're hard to see. Um, I'm sorry if things are hard to see, but I want you guys to read what but I'm reading, and then we can go on from there. Let's go get this. Um, this is more updates on what's been happening. Let me uh, stop sharing. I want to share my tab so you guys can see this. Hold on. I'm not trying to drop the link. Sorry, y'all. Close that. All right, let's go get this. Hopefully, you guys can see it. If I need to make myself smaller... And I'll zoom in for y'all, but I'll make myself much smaller so you guys can see what I'm looking at. Hold on. Let me go get it. All right. And let me. Can you guys see this? It's super small, huh? 
Let me see. Is it making it bigger? Is this making it bigger for y'all? I don't see it moving on y'all's end. I'm going to try to read it. I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, I'm trying to make it bigger for y'all, but hold on. Let me stop sharing and share it again because I want, I want you guys to be able to read along. All right, hold on. I want you guys to see it because it's very, it's kind of small, but you know. I apologize, y'all. All right. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it, but I'll read it for y'all. Your eyes aren't that good. Okay, I'll read it for you guys anyway. So it says, Rodney Lil Rod Jones. This is the person, the guy who's suing him. Rodney Lil Rod Jones Jr. is from the Windy City, Chi-Town. He was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. Mr. Jones is the second old, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the second oldest son and fourth child of nine siblings. Mr. Jones comes from a long time of gospel music influences. It says Mr. Jones started playing instruments at the age of five. He began playing drums in church. And at the age of 13, he picked up playing the guitar. From 13 to present day, Mr. Jones has taught himself to play over 13 instruments. Now, this is him, the child prodigy. Let me see. Can I make this bigger for y'all? I just want to see if it's going bigger for y'all. Yeah, it's kind of going bigger. All right. This is Mr. Jones. Me and Mr. Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones. It says Mr. Jones is considered a musical prodigy. His talents have led him to uh, produce and create a commercial marketplace for music that has been recorded by some of the most prestigious and highly acclaimed artists in the industry or in music history, I'm sorry. Throughout the duration of his career, Mr. Jones has worked the south side of Chicago music scene, playing with the following legends in, uh, legendary greats. Georgia Mass Choir, Donald Lawrence, the Clark Sisters, and uh, the Smokey Norfolk. Oh, I know the last two, the Clark Sisters and Sno Smokey Norfolk. On or about August 2022, Mr. Jones received a call from Mr. Combs requesting that he produce several songs on a rhythm and blues album titled The Love Album, Off the Grid, love album mr jones agreed and his life has been detrimentally impacted ever since can i just say this diddy this wasn't really worth it and the only reason i'm saying that diddy bop is because the album was trash you know what i mean and i ain't even heard it but because i haven't heard it i know it was trash so you was doing all this r word and essaying and and, and all of this for a trash album is this what we're doing is this what we've come to Oh, have we subjected ourselves to this, Mr. Combs? We expected more out of you now. We expected more out of you, Mr. Combs. All right, let's move on to the next. Let me see. Is it? Will it let me go to the next one? All right. Um. All right. Th and this is from Gossip of the City as well. This uh screenshot. So shout out to them. Let's go get the next page. Um. Because, I mean, the album was trash. I mean, at least, let me not. Because then y'all going to say, voodoo, there you go. Woo -doo -woo -doo. So let me not. Anyways, let's move on. From September 2022 to November 2023, Mr. Jones produced nine songs on Mr. Combs' love album. Mr. Jones lived with Mr. Combs for, for months at a time, spending holidays, birthdays, and missing major family events. Mr. Jones resided at Mr. Cone's residence located in Los Angeles, California, New York City, and Miami, Florida. Mr. Jones also spent several weeks on a yacht rented by Mr. Combs in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Listen, this puts location that was not there. And we already read through this last time we did this live on Diddy. This puts a location. Mind you, he said L.A., New York, Miami, and the Virgin Islands. They've already rated Miami. In California. Hmm. Well, all we got left is New York and the Virgin Islands. Anyways, it says throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones witnessed, experienced, and endured many things that went far beyond his role as a producer on the Love Album. The claims raised in the complaint have been cor corroborated, I'm sorry, through witness statements 
video, audio recordings, and images that Mr. Jones has in his possession. Mr. Combs required Mr. Jones to record him constantly. On several occasions, Mr. Combs took Mr. Jones' cell phone and began recording himself. As a result, Mr. Jones has secured hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Mr. Combs, his staff, and the guests engaging in serious illegal activity. Now, a lot of y'all are going to say, well, what about NDAs? He should have had them sign the NDA. That doesn't go into play when we're talking about legal. All right. So it goes on to say, um, no, they haven't gotten New York misunderstood. We already read it. They only got Miami and LA. They didn't get New York yet. So it says, Mr. Jones has secured ir irrefutable, I'm sorry, irrefutable evidence of the acquisition, use, and distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and shrooms. The displaying uh, and, and distributing, distribution, I'm sorry, of unregistered illegal blickies. Unregistered and illegal blickies. Let's go get the next one. So this is big D right here. This is a big deal. So we're looking at drugs and unregistered blickies. Let me make this bigger. I think I've seen this one already. Uh, yeah, wait, let me see. Let me make this bigger. Yeah, we already saw this one. Let me close this one out. Let me close this one out. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, da, da, da. All right, here we go. All right, it also says Mr. Jones was SH'd and SA'd by Mr. Combs. Can you guys see it? Yeah, you can see it. Throughout his time living with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones was the victim of constant unsolicited and unauthorized groping and touching of his anus by Mr. Combs. Now, I've always, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. That part always takes me for a loop because how you got to go like, like you got to part the red seed to get to the, the seed of the apple. So I guess what I'm trying to say is who cut the apple down the middle to these events took place in LA, New York, Florida, and the United States Virgin Islands. In addition to the unsolicited and unauthorized touching, Mr. Jones was forced by Mr. Combs to work in Mr. Combs' bathroom. Oh, God. As Mr. Combs walked around naked and showered in a clear glass enclosure. Let me say this. You want me, you want a way for me to quit? Put me in a bathroom. I can't, I have a phobia of bathrooms, even though I clean my own. Ah, I, I have a thing. Bathrooms just icky to me. Girl, I will walk away from a million dollars if you try to make me work in a bathroom. All right, but he was walking around there naked for that man to see. And I'm pretty sure he had that dog on that hot steam blowing on the uh, on the glass so that you could think you don't look at you ain't looking at what you're looking at. Then next thing you know, you see cheeks on the glass. I know I'm there is giving that's what type of shit did it, you know, type of time he on, you know. As a heterosexual Christian man, girl, bye. <laughs> that be the part that take me out every time. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. As a heterosexual Christian man. That sound like what I be telling the people at my job when I be telling them I can't do stuff because of my religion. As a heterosexual Christian woman, sir, I'm sorry. I cannot. I am very religious. Uh, you know, I'm practicing my religion every day. I am a Christian woman. So I don't think that I'll be able to move forward with such actions. Now, um, I would like to go and pray about it in my car if you would give me the opportunity because, you know, this doesn't really sit right with me and God. I've just given myself back to my religion. And, you know, I think this might compromise. You know, that's what this part is giving to me. And I'll be lying like a rug. Do you hear me? It says, girl, this is a time. It says, as a heterosexual Christian man, Mr. Jones was uncomfortable with Mr. Combs' advances, and he expressed his discomfort to Mr. Uh, Combs' chief of staff, Christina Corrin, Corrin, whatever, KK girl, KK. He told KK, girl, look, I'm, I'm uncomfortable. He said, KK responded to Mr. Jones' complaint with, you know, Sean will be Sean. Boys will be boys. Bitch, KK, if you don't get your ugly ass around here, bitch, and do what I told you need to do, bitch, I'm going to HR. What the fuck? It says, Queso also attempted to downplay Mr. Combs' groping of Mr. Jones' anus and genitals. How he get between the... As friendly horseplay, stating that those were acts 
uh, those acts were Mr. Combs' way of showing that he likes you, Mr. Jones. Uh, groovy kind of love. I think, yeah, I think, um, I think, I think Mr. Jones was doing the bending. I ain't gonna lie. I think, I think he was doing the bending. Oh, look, let me mess your head up. It wasn't just Fonsworth who lived with him. Guess who else lived with him, but acting like they want to be all separate from it. Guess who else? Get me up here. Guess who else lived with him but want to act like they they are they apart from it? Harlem on the rise. Now mates be the man that'll make you do you. Da -da 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 -da. I don't even for you. Uh, total it all up and put it on my tab. And then tell your friends all up that you had. Tell me what you want from me, Mace. Mace. Girl, bye. But he gonna, he gonna go on this whole diatribe how he ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Nigga, I'm squinting my eye at you, Mace. You was robbing to his Batman for a long time, Mace. What the fuck going on? But that's my personal opinion about this whole Mace situation. You wrote all the music, didn't you? I'm pretty sure y'all was in the stew, in the hot glass, in the shower with buns and cheeks on the glass. But y'all gonna let Mace slide because Mace a past and now he over there with Killer Cam. Never trust a nigga who hang with a nigga who rap like this. Pink shoulders on the block. Bliggy, bliggy block on the motherfucking block. I got my glass, I got my cup. I don't give a pluck, cause I am the what? Happy, happy, ending down. I don't like clowns, but I be around. Yo, I'm from Harlem, baby, where people crazy and they act all brazy. Yo, I'm the mace, not mace though, the mace for the case. Yo. I got my Tims and my pink hoodie because you know in the hood I'm slim goody. Yo, you know what's up, bro. Tell everybody on the west side it's a go. Yo, I'm in this bitch. Hey, yo, tell your broad I said hit me on the switch. Yo, that type of nigga. Never trust a nigga who hang with a nigga who rap like uh, 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 um, the cat in the hat. If the cat in the hat was from Harlem and he was a Negro, his name would be Killer Cam. Okay? So I don't trust Killer Cam. I don't trust Dipset at all. I don't trust Dipset. I don't trust nobody that signed with the nigga. I don't sign the, the label. I don't trust the label who signed the nigga. I don't, I don't trust the people who bought the album at this part. I don't trust nobody associating with Killer Cam. I don't trust it. But he won't go sit over there with Killer Cam acting like he don't know nothing. He ain't seen nothing, nigga, please. Mace cannot be trusted. Neither can Killer Cam. And y'all should have knew that when he was over there writing Cat in the Hat on y'all albums and shit. Shout out to New York. Y'all thought that nigga was flashing and flossing when he came through with the hoodie, with the with the meek hoodie, the pink meek, meek hoodie and the long ass Tims. Y'all in, in the baggy jeans, the baggy rocker wears. Girl, y'all with the RW on the belt. Girl, y'all thought that nigga was cool as cheese. Girl, please. Girl, please. Bitty, bitty, bopty bop. I'm not Barney, but I wop the wop on the streets and on the block. Bitty, bitty, bop, 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 bop. Tell your partner, holler at me. Don't holler, just holler at me. You think I'm crazy? You think I'm Kathy? Nah, my G, I'm in the happy. Yo, New York on the building. Niggas crazy thinking that I'm killing it. But I don't kill it. I just hit the block. Cause bibbity bop, 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 the boot bop. Girl, bye. Girl, bye.
never liked them, never liked them, never liked them. I don't care what none of y'all say. I don't care about Jimbo. Holy, I don't care about none of that ugly ass shit. Never liked them. Not one bit. Not one bit. And I say what I see. I don't care. I don't care. They were the worst from New York. They were the worst. They were the worst of the worst, New York. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now y'all back on the docket. It, it, you know, it's just so easy. Anyway, let's move on. It's not about Killer Cam, but I was just saying that part, you know, for me. Anyways, let's move on because I don't want to, you know, Cam is not on trial yet. Cam is not on trial yet. Okay. So anyway, as a heterosexual Christian man, Mr. Jones was un un <laughs> uncomfortable with Mr. Combs' advances and expressed his discomfort to, Ms., uh, to Mr. Combs' chief of staff, KK. KK responded to Mr. Jones' complaint with, you know, Sean will be Sean. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, then he says KK also attempted to downplay Mr. Combs, groping of Mr. Jones' anus and genitals as friendly horseplay, stating that those acts were Mr. Combs' way of showing that he likes you. Girl, bye. That's what y'all niggas do when the women ain't... Let me move on. Despite the assurances on several occasions when Mr. Combs began to undress and walk around his house naked, KK would say, okay, I'm leaving now, and she would disappear. KK's hypocrisy is breathtaking at best or enabling at worst. Mr. Jones believes that KK added in a, aided and abetted, I'm sorry, Mr. Combs' SA of him and was working with Mr. Combs to groom him into accepting an H relationship. Throughout the S uh, Deviant Acts, it says one would say Mr. Combs has a pattern of practice of engaging in such nefarious activities. Uh, this ongoing un uh, conduct shows that Mr. Combs cannot be rehabilitated. The nigga said the nigga's ill, stick in the head. He said Mr. Combs can't even go to rehab and be better. He's gone. That's what he's trying to say. Mr. Combs, it says Mr. Combs attempt to groom Mr. Jones into engaging in gay sex. Mr. Combs was aware that Mr. Jones looked up to and idolized music producer Stevie. Stevie. Stevie, you trying to send me back to the strip club, Stevie? Stevie, you want to send me back to the strip club, Stevie? I'm not going to let you send me back to the strip club, Stevie. Stevie, you always trying to make it my face that you're going to send me back to the strip club, Stevie. I'm not going to let you send me back to the strip club. I already covered the strip club. You always want to tell me in my face that you're going to send me back to the strip club, Stevie. I'm not going to let you send me back to the strip club, Stevie. Stevie, you always do that to me, Stevie. Every time we get into an argument, you tell me you're going to send me back to the strip club. We're not going to do that, Stevie. Not today. No, 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 no. I already covered the streets of Puerto Rico. I'm not going to let you send me back to the strip club, Stevie. Not Stevie. No, no, no. That, that nigga there. He says Stevie J is an American DJ, record producer, and television personality. Stevie J was a part of Bad, 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 Bad Boy production team and the Hitmen. In 1997, CJ, Stevie J won a Grammy Award for his work on Puffy's debut album. Throughout the late 1990s, Stevie J produced for several artists, including Mariah Carey, Tevin Campbell, The Notorious B.I.G., 112, Jodeci Faith, Jay-Z, and Eve. And Eve, you know, that was his old lady. Remember Eve said she had came up in there and so he was with that girl and girl. Stevie been a whole since he, girl. Anyways, it says Stevie was one of the producers on the Love Album, allegedly. This is all alleged. I don't know this to be true. This is all alleged. Let's go get the other piece. Now, listen, let me tell y'all something. I don't know if what they say Stevie did is true. All I know is according to Jocelyn, the Puerto Rican uh, proper, she said that, Joc that he have a, a, a peen. He got a big one. That's what she said. I didn't say it. She said he got a little one, two, yin, yin, yin. Okay. Now we done jumped ahead. Hold on. Did we jump ahead? I think we did, but that's all right. We're going to go with the move. Let's go with the move. Let's make this bigger. She said his little beefcake is beefcake. All right. It's all out of whack, but don't worry about it, y'all. Follow me, camera. Follow me, camera. Mr. Combs providing lace double alcohol beverage to minors and S workers at his homes in California, New York, and the Virgin Islands and Florida. Mr. Combs, chief of staff KK, introducing her staff to retrieve drugs and so she can provide it to Mr. Combs for his consumption. Christian Combs, drugging and sexually 
ASing a woman. Now, which one is Christian? And is that the one who looked like him or is that the light skinned one? Put a one in the chat if that's the light skinned one. Put a two in the chat if that's the one who looked just like him. Who be going? Which one is that? I'm trying to see some. You know, I don't know these churns. They coming for love in hip hop. One, if that's the light skin. Two, if that's the one that the dark skin one who look like them. Kim, Kim LaBoy. One, if that's the light skin one. Two, if that's Kim LaBoy. I don't know neither, child. They say it's the light skin one. Two is the brown one. Oh, girl, I'm confused. Which one is it? Is it Kim LaBoy who look just like him? Put a two in the chat if that's him. Put a one in the chat if that's the light skin one. I'm confused. I, you know, every time I ask this question, the, the crowd be just as confused as me. Quincy is Kim's son. The brown skin one ain't girl. Either way, is he the dark skin one or the light skin one? That's all I that matter. Did his twin? Okay, got it. That's the one who looked just like him, girl. I ain't got time for all of this. It's Kim Baby Boy. They say it ain't Kim Baby, child. I don't know. Let's move on. Mr. Combs, chief of staff, KK, introduces herself to retrieve drugs so she can provide a Mr. Combs for his consumption. Okay. Uh, oh, she got two sons with him? Girl, I can't keep up. Too many children, too many baby mamas. It says, um, Christian Combs drugging an SA in a woman. Mr. Combs detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with Bishop T.D. Take that, take that. Remember T.D. was at the party? Y'all remember T.D. was at the party? And y'all was trying to say, oh, he was there giving a word of prayer. Remember that? Y'all remember when y'all lied and said T.D. was over there giving a word? Remember y'all said that? And I told y'all y'all a motherfucking lie. Remember that? Y'all, Do y'all remember T.D. at the party and they said, oh, well, girl, he's a man of God. How you know he not over there, you know, praying, laying hands? And I said, because this is a freak off. They don't lay them type of hands. Remember I told y'all that? And y'all was telling me, oh, no, voodoo, there you go, there you go. Look at T.D. at the party. We're going to come back to that. Let's get T.D. at the party, please, and thank you. Get T.D. up here. See, this is what be, listen, if I had one wish, T.D. would go down all over town, pottery house down. If I had one wish, it was a matter of fact, I was the one I said he going to go first. It was about two weeks ago. Don't act like you don't know. I need Titty. I need Titty up out of here. Look. Happy birthday. And he's singing, happy birthday to you. Get him up out of here. I need Nick Nack in the paddy wagon down to the pottery house ASAP Rocky. Do you hear me? This nigga here, which nigga who? That nigga there. I need him here. I need him going ASAP. Get off of here, Rocky. You looking crazy too. I need this nigga here. Which nigga who? That nigga there. I need him in handcuffs immediately, expeditiously. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He want to be on the time. Happy birthday to you. Nigga, what is you doing at the freak off? This is the question I want to ask. What is this nigga doing down at the freak off? Don't tell me, oh God, Jesus hung with the with the murderers, and I don't want to hear that ugly ass shit. Jesus wasn't at the freak off. What is he doing at the freak off? Nah, somebody got to make this. You know what I mean? Make sense. And look at her looking like she Lenny Kravitz's little sister. Girl, get off of here. And look at him. You next, nigga. Hold on, let me back you up. You next, so so deaf. And let me tell you why so so deaf next after Diddy. Pause. You right here. You know why you next, your little light bulb head, little bastard? You know he about yay high. Let me tell you why he next. Because, nigga, you had a whole label with nothing but churn. I think the oldest person you had on your label was uh was was uh, uh the brat. And at that time, we didn't know she was dagging. The people of Chicago knew y'all didn't tell us. But we kind of knew it, but we wasn't sure. You next, little nigga, tread light. Tread light. All them churn come up under so-so death. Tread light, little nigga. Everybody want to wish Diddy happy birthday. Where y'all antennas when the nigga over here getting raided? See what I'm saying? This is ridiculous. Let me see. Oh. 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 Yeah, somebody put this song. That's the song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Let's go up. Happy if the law gave me three wishes right now, I ain't lying. I'm not bullshitting. If God gave me four wishes, I say four. I ain't gonna lie. Three, I might not get, do get them. But four, if God gave me four wishes right now, see this nigga here? Him in the whole pottery house, bitch. Tear down like the walls of Jericho. Do you hear me? Tear down like the walls of Jericho. If I had four wishes. But I ain't got three, I ain't got two, I ain't got one. But if I had the look, look, look at this nigga. Happy birthday. Oh no, nigga, please. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. If I had four wishes, Lord, just four. Just give me four, Lord. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Everybody on team Operation TD, Operation Takedown TD, stand by. We will be back revisiting this. I promise you, I can feel it in my spirit. Everybody on Operation TD, y'all know what I'm talking about. Stand by. We still taking volunteers. We still need a couple more security and uh, cooks. And people, and if you want your churn to learn how to spy as a young child, have them come by, contact me at Voodoo Doll TV Podcast. Voodoo Doll Podcast. We need more churn to check on these people. Let's get back into this. So it also says, um, oh, this way it get um good. It says Mr. Combs dealing how he planned, detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with TD Take That Take That to soften the impact of his public image with Cassie Ventura's lawsuit. Young Miami's cousin or assistant and or assistant allegedly essayed Mr. Jones. According, I'm sorry, actor Cuba Gooden Jr. sexually or SH and SA Mr. Jones as well. We already went over that. Um, rapper redacted, we know who that was, Meek Millie, on Mr. Combs' yacht, Consorting with underage girls, S workers, and RB singer redacted. I'm the kind of brother who been doing my way, getting my bed for years. In my career, that type of nigga. Uh, in Mr. Combs, LA Homes, consorted with underage girls and S workers, allegedly. It also says uh, Chalice recording studio shootings. On or about September 12, 2022, Mr. Combs held a writer's and producer's camp at Chalice, Chalice I'm sorry, rec recording studios at 845 Highland Avenue, L.A. County or L.A. California, 90038. Present at this camp were Mr. Combs, his son Justin, and Justin's friend named G. Mr. G is a 30-year-old tall African-American male. In addition to these individuals, other musicians were present at the camp. The writer has spoken to several musicians who attended the camp. On evening, I'm sorry, one evening during the camp, uh, Mr. Combs, Jay Combs, and G were in a heated conversation. That conversation was moved out of the studio and into a restroom adjacent to where Mr. Jones was sitting. Mr. Jones was approximately two feet away from the bathroom when blicky shots rang out. Mr. Jones recalls hearing multiple blicky shots. Listen, y'all wondering why them people got all these people over there running down the house the way they running it down listen it's a lot of crimes being committed or alleged in this doggone suit there's a lot of crimes being alleged in this suit it's ridiculous at this point it's ridiculous let's go get some more girl this the one right here let's go get it listen y'all wondering why i'm telling y'all why it's because of this i think it's because of this and a multitude of other things, but ultimately, you know what I mean? Let me make this bigger. Mr. Jones immediately went to a state of shock and feared that he would be blicky next. It says Mr. Jones genuinely believed that he would be blicky through the door due to how close he was. After the blicky ended, a crowd gathered around the restroom. When the door finally opened, Mr. Combs and Jay Combs exited. G was lying on the restroom floor in a fetal position, holding his stomach and bleeding out of his leg slash hip area. Everyone stood around looking upon G. Frustrated by the lack of aid to G, Mr. Jones dropped everything, ran to G, and immediately began placing pressure on G's gunshot wound to his stomach. As he was applying pressure to his stomach, Mr. Jones realized that G was gushing uh, blood from another area near his hip slash leg. He decided to lift G and place him to sit on the toilet. 
Mr. Jones asked the crowd to call the ambulance. Mr. Jones lit the G and brought him to the ambulance on, at the studio front. At this time, Mr. Combs and Justin appeared or disappeared, I'm sorry, to another part of the studio. Mr. Combs gave strict instructions to inform the police that had anything uh, that he had nothing to do with the shooting. He also forced Mr. Jones to lie to the police by telling them G was shot standing outside the studio by a drive-by assailant. Now listen, mind you, Diddy had the police in his pocket who was also the cop of or the friend cop or security for Michael Jackson when he was unfortunately unalive. So this is a big deal. And let me just say this. We, we're not going to act like this is impossible. This is actually very probable because this is what happens in the industry and with people of influence. You ain't even got to be in the industry. Everybody knows somebody who has some sort of influence. I think he was a freak too, misunderstood. I, I think he was a freak too. But baby, I, listen, if I had to lie, he would have never seen me again. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry, because I would have been like, oh, hell no, nigga. You trying to get me caught up. No, no, um, no usher. Why I'm so caught up, got me feeling it. No usher. But I would have been like, hell no, nigga. You trying to, the fuck, nigga? I'm trying to live after this. The fuck wrong with you? All right, um... Can you see this? Yeah, y'all should be able to see it. It says, officer were called to the 800 block of North Highland Avenue at Willingville, whatever, to check into reports of a shooting at about 3 a.m. according to the LAPD. At the location they found, man had been shot after uh, stepping outside the studio, allegedly. It says the man in his 30s was taken to a hospital in stable condition. He was reportedly sh uh, shot in the abdomen. Uh, Sky 2 was over the scene earlier. Monday spotted several people sitting outside the location being questioned by the police. Where is the victim? Where is the victim? No information was released about the suspect and is unknown or is known if the shooting was gang related. Where is the victim? Probably pay paid off somewhere. Probably somewhere living good, eating good, paid off. The man in his 30s was taken into a hospital in stable condition. He was reportedly shot in the abdomen. We already saw that part. Listen, where is this so-called victim? G, where's G? Anybody seen G? You guys, please like the video. Thank you, guys. We got over 1,000 likes. Please continue to like the video. I appreciate it. Right, Kelly? No body cam, no nothing. Just word for word, bar for bar type shit. I don't know what's going on. I have no idea what's going on. But where is the victim? They say no face, no case now. Let me see. And here's the photos. Let me see. Can y'all see this? No, let me share it. And here are the photos from the situation. Mr. Jones had the clothing he wore that day and believes it may still have the stains and DNA of G's blood. The following are screenshots of the aftermath of the restroom where G was shot by either Mr. Combs or Jay Combs. Now, we did this poll last time. Put a one in the chat if you think Diddy did it. Put a two in the chat if you think the son did it. One in the chat if you think Diddy shot this man. Put a two in the chat if you think Justin did it. Mind you, Diddy said, hey, no matter what, tell them people I ain't had nothing to do with that. Put a one in the chat if you think Diddy did it. Put a two in the chat if you think Justin the son did it. I'm with you, Kelly. It might be both of them. Mm-hmm. I'm with you too, Spill T with D. It might be both of them at this point. I don't know who to look at. I, I'm, I'm confused. I'm confused as y'all. Clearly, G was not shot outside the studio as Mr. Combs uh, instructed his team to report to law enforcement. Mr. Combs and defendant LR, MR, UMG, and CRS, uh, CRS, I'm sorry, provided private security of the writer's camp at defendant CRS. So let's say Justin did it. Who knows, child? But why would Diddy come out and be like, yo, for sure, make sure that you let him know I ain't had nothing to do with it. That's suspect, especially when it's between you and your son. 
I'd rather not say nothing than to say, hey, make sure they know it wasn't me. So, the security was uh, porous and lackluster at best. The fact that either Mr. Combs and Jake Combs were allowed to enter CRS with blickies and those blickies were not confiscated by security is a clear breach of duty of Mr. Combs, defendants, guns, and blickies. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. LR, MR, and UMG to protect Mr. Jones and the other attendees of the writer's camp. Remember, I told y'all this with Tamar. Remember when um that Tasmanian devil, you know, the, the, the loose tooth bandit, the missing tooth bandit, Krishan. Remember, she had went all Tasmanian Incredible Hulk on James over there with uh Tamar and knocked James, uh, knocked the Chipman James too. Remember, I said, bitch, I'll be suing Tamar, the production company, the management company, because all y'all responsible for my safety. That's what this man is saying. Bitch, all y'all failed me. Y'all should have made sure I was safe. As a, result, as a result of this shooting, Mr. Jones is severely traumatized. Mr. Jones now suffers full PTSD, severe anxiety, depression, and insomnia. Hmm. I'm just telling y'all what would have happened if it was me. If it were me, if it were me, I don't care if I'm at Blockbuster and it ain't even open no more. I don't give a good goddamn if I'm at Winn-Dixie. Bitch. If somebody come in that bitch acting a fool and I get some sort of PTSD, I'm suing Win dixie I'm suing the, 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 the people who deliver the food. I'm suing the nigga who don't even be there, but he own it. He got a partnership. I'm suing everybody. Everybody got to go down because you are all responsible for my safety when I'm in here. This your shit, ain't it? Ain't this your shit? <sighs> So now this spilled over to JC, Jay Z, you guys. And guess who's doing the trolling? Guess who's doing the trolling? Take a guess. Y'all know what it is. Y'all know who's doing the trolling. 50. Now, 50 must have some clean ass hands for the way he's been trolling. I'm not mad at it. It's funny. But I'm just saying the way 50 been trolling, them hands must be squeaky clean. Do you hear me? So 50 done moved on to Jay Z, not whole. H-O-V, similar to the letters no one could do it better. Now look at the neighbor, look at the neighbor. Right next to him, he do too much. He be like, he be like buses, like big ass buses. He can see all type of shit hop out. Especially at night time, like around three o'clock in the morning. It gets wild. I'm this his neighbor. neighbor. When I basketball go over there, I just let it be because I don't want to go. <laughs> Niggas yeah, y'all stop bringing all the miners over here late at night. I live right next to him. He do too much. He be like, he be like buses, like big ass buses. You can see all type of shit hop out. Especially at night time, like around 3 o'clock in the morning. It gets wild. I'm his neighbor. When my basketball go over there, I just let it be because I don't want to go to the door. Why niggas do the most? That nigga say, my basketball go over there, I just let it be. <laughs> <laughs> why do wild black people like this like and then he volunteered this information like what are you <laughs> he said it's wild three in the morning buses be pulling up and stuff shit my basketball go over there i just let it be nigga you know basketballs ain't cheap he said fuck it i'll give me another one so 50 uh is trolling it says 50 says when my basketball go over there i just let it be lol oh shit this is 50. That's not it. You know, 50 gonna do the most. Diddy like FBI, DEA, Homeland Security couldn't catch me, bitch. LOL. Look. You won't stop. I thought I told you that. Girl. Black people literally take nothing serious. There's nothing that we take serious in life. Say that. 
Yeah, get them two girls right there. Tell them to come to our party later. Girl, why are we did why why? How are we made like this? Is my question. That nigga said somebody he said, I passed my two sons sleeping shit. Somebody gotta live to tell a story. Oh my god, we just so unserious about the most serious shit. Uh, 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 I thought I they almost got us. They almost got us. Almost. Almost. I was this close. You're right, Yolanda. Hey, I, I was going to get some tea. I looked out the blind. Yeah. I see them coming. Man. I threw anything I could find. That's why I got on this. <laughs> hey, I, I ran so fast. I ran back my son when they were asleep. I said, I said, somebody got a little tell us. Somebody got a little tell us. Don't tell us that. We don't stop. Don't tell us that. We don't stop. They can't catch us. I don't tell us that. We don't stop. I never not tell us that. Man, we're gonna beat them. You know what I'm saying? Tell Carisha to call me when you talk to him. Yeah, get them two girls right there. Tell them to come to our party later. Girl, we are the whore. We are. Listen, I love us. I, I hate us when I hate us, but I love us when I love us. Like people said in the chat, we the type of people will make a joke out of some real fucked up shit to laugh to keep from crying, girl. Girl, this is her. I don't know who this child is. I'm sorry. I wouldn't know who this man is if you walk right past me right now. My Kiki uh Palmer voice. But this was fucking hilarious. Do you hear me? Fucking hilarious. Fucking hilarious. Oh, this is the mule. So, you guys, I want to tell y'all about the mule. The mule has been arrested. Um, look at 50 said, what the fuck was he doing with this, this fool? Diddy's alleged mule arrested on drug charges during federal agent run-in. Now, Diddy went and got him a clear man. I guess Diddy said he going to be easier to pass through, you know, customs in the airport. Ain't nobody going to stop him. He's a clear man. And his mule was stopped, frisked, and allegedly questioned. Now, I don't know this to be fact. I'm just telling y'all what they said, okay? Don't come dragging me. I'm just telling y'all what they said. Now, I, like I said, I don't know for a fact. Uh, um, well, it has been proven that this is real. Uh, I'm pretty sure this man is going to snitch. I mean, look at his face. Doesn't he look like he's going to snitch? I know I would, and I don't look like that. I definitely would. Let's get into this mule. Let's get into this mule. In case you guys don't know what a mule is, it's the person who carrying the, the drugs back and forth. Man alleged to be Diddy's mule busted for drugs in South Florida as rap moguls' homes is raised. Look at this. You see the pictures? Miami. A man described in a lawsuit as rap mogul Diddy's mule was busted on drug charges at Miami Open Locker ex Executive Airport Monday afternoon as the artist's homes on both sides of the country were being raised or rated, I'm sorry, by federal agents. And before a plane linked to the superstar producer took off from the airport to a Caribbean island. Miami-Dade police charged Brendan Paul, 25, of charging Falls, Ch Chagrin, Chagrin, how that, Falls, Ohio, with possession of cocaine and suspected marijuana lace candy at the airport. So he had a couple of edibles at 4.30 p.m. just before a plane linked to Diddy, whose legal name is Sean Combs, took off for Antigua. The arrest affidavit was brief and said the alleged drugs were found in Paul's bag but made no mention of Diddy. Why he thought he could go through that? Maybe because he was getting on the private. I don't know. Is that what it is? A law enforcement source said Miami-Dade police working a different detail at the airport were asked to take a look at the plane linked to Diddy by Homeland Security investigators. Once inside the aircraft, the source said they found drugs in Paul's possession. Oh, so they were on a private. Paul's arrest was not related to Monday's federal raid on Combs Mansion on Star Island in Miami Beach and in Los Angeles, which were part of an ongoing S-trafficking investigation. Homeland Security investigations agents have, haven't been specifically, I mean, I'm sorry, haven't said specifically what they were seized or what they seized or were looking for, but the raid came a month after a lawsuit was brought by a music producer who accused Diddy, 53, of using a producer and others to hire S workers for him. Oh, it's on a, it's on the ad. I want to play this for y'all. Let's see what it is. There's an ad. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Are they saying anything? All right, it's just saying what the article is saying. 
All right. Though Paul or, or a representative haven't or hadn't been reached by early Tuesday afternoon, a man named Brendan Paul is described as Mr. Combs' mule and as a distributor of his drugs and weapons in the lawsuit uh, filed against Diddy last month by producers Rodney Lil Rod Jones. It says the man arrested in the lawsuit spells Paul's first name slightly different. According to Paul's arrest, he was taken to the Turner Guilford Knight Correctional Center. He got a he got out of jail on a twenty five thousand or twenty five hundred. I'm sorry, dollar bond. And his first court appearance is scheduled April twenty fourth. The lawsuit filed by Jones in the Southern District of New York says Diddy, his staff, and music executives knew about and were involved in illicit and unwanted s activities in Florida, New York, California, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. The lawsuit also claimed that Paul would pay S workers in cash. Oh, wow. Prosecutors from the Federal Southern District of New York are heading a, sec a S trafficking investigation. And Jones is one of the several people who are witnesses, sources familiar with the probe told the Miami Herald. A source told Herald that Diddy and his entourage arrived in Miami over the weekend and were here with, when federal agents searched his home on Star Island in Los Angeles. Diddy and his entourage, including family members and friends, flew to Antigua Monday from the Opa-Laka airport after being questioned by federal agents at the airport, according to sources. So what they're saying is that they were questioned at the airport, then Diddy and them got the hell on. So I listen, I believe in my heart of hearts, you guys, I believe that Diddy was tipped off. I might be wrong, but I believe somebody was like, bro, they might not have said, hey, they about to come raid you. But somebody was like, bro, you need to dip. I believe that, y'all. I don't know why. I believe it. I believe somebody said, bro, you need to dip. I, I don't know what's coming down the pike, but you know what I mean? I think you need to just dip. Because this doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense. It truly doesn't make sense. I believe somebody told him to dip, and he did. It is sick. It's sick. If you guys are just joining in, I want to show y'all his house after the raid. This is the house after the raid. You think Paul dropped the Don Williams? Who knows? But something ain't right. Something ain't right. His lawyer more than, more than likely found out first, possibly. Possibly. Listen, he got money. I know he got ears everywhere. Nessa, I know he got ears everywhere because he got money. Like, of course he knows somebody tipping. Yo, even if they're on the phone, be like, yo, bro, come to Antigua. And he like, Antigua? And they like, nigga. Come to Antigua. I bet. I'm a, I'm a, you know what I mean? Even if they don't say, you know, what it's for. This man got money and influence and power. But Kanye West said, no one man should have all that power. Something in the milk ain't clean with this raid. I be, I'm, I'm agreeing with you, Steph. I'm agreeing with you as well. So the guy who assisted him in the NYPD, let's go get him. Let's go get him. Now, this guy has also been known to be associated with Michael Jackson. MJ, beat it, bad nigga. You know what I'm saying? That nigga. Let's go get him. Hold on. Um, It's raining out here. Fahim Mahad. Fahim Mahad. Let me go get an article on him. We got to go get... He, well, I don't want to play CNN. I don't want him to drag me. Y'all think CNN going to drag me if I play, if I play a video? Y'all think Candace always going to drag me if I play her? Girl, it's a, it's a sad world we live in. It's a sad world we live in. Fuck it. I'm going to show y'all a little bit. So Fahim Mahad, right? Let me see. 
Candace Owens, bitch, you trying to be black again, ho. Don't drag me, bitch. I'm trying to get a story to the people, ho. Now, if you come over here and you drag me, bitch, it's going to be a problem. She probably going to drag me anyway. I don't give a fuck. Bitch, you trying to be black again, ho. Look. Hold on. Something from TMZ playing. I don't want that to play. Look at Candace Owens brought this out, which I already knew, but let's get into it. It's the lawsuit that we have been covering and following so much being revealed. You're not going to believe that somehow it is connected to Michael Jackson and his death. And I got to be honest, I'm kind of terrified. I think this is going to be the last day that I cover it. I thought that we were in full conspiracy theory territory when people were saying that Michael Jackson was killed. I actually know a lot of people that are in the industry who believe that Michael Jackson was killed. And I just thought it just sounds too, too whacked out. Too don't get me wrong. I believe Michael Jackson was popped too. I don't think that man accidentally OD. I think he was popped. I think Sony and the clears who wanted his catalog. This between me and y'all. Don't you know what I mean? But I believe they was like, get that nigga up out of here. ASAP Rocky. And he was talking too crazy. He was telling black people, you know, he was they was like, I right, get him out of here. He was giving back black people back their masters and all of that. You know what? I just don't believe it was a mistake. That's all. I don't know who did it. I'm just saying I don't believe that was a mistake. To believe that somebody intentionally killed Michael Jackson. Now, I want to remind you, before we get back into Michael Jackson, what we learned in the Diddy document. If you read through them, again, these are all allegations, but you will come out of it understanding that there is allegedly some sort of a blackmail ring that is operating throughout Hollywood and that artists that are producing music are actually being controlled uh, via being induced into drugs at parties and then what takes place is they're being recorded and sometimes they're being recorded while they are in committing sexual acts with minors and something that we also saw in these docs is it's funny that she says that it's funny that she says that it's funny that she says that like i told y'all that shit that nickelodeon shit that epstein shit it's not just Oh, uh, it's not just only for that. That is in this entire industry. All these people want to get their churn to sign up to be actors and actresses. Know what you're signing your churn up. All these people who want to be in this industry, even if you are talented in the most way, the most great way, know what you're getting into. Because this is the type of stuff that happens in this industry all over. It's called Holly Weird for a reason. And this dude, Fahim Mahad or Muhammad or whatever his name is, he's giving Floyd Mayweather a little cousin. This nigga here, which nigga who that nigga there cannot be trusted. And where was his antennas when Diddy was getting ready? He probably was the one who tipped them off. You, you never know, you know. Who knows? Is that these parties, at least a lot of them, are taking place in the Virgin Islands, which again just makes you go, what's happening here? Because Jeffrey Epstein, obviously his mm -hmm. home or he owned an island uh, that was just off the coast of St. Thomas. So we hear that again. And I'd say the biggest point that we took away from these Diddy Docs was that this ring, if you believe it exists, can and will murder people to mm -hmm. protect themselves. And he intimated this event that happened allegedly at a, a recording studio where- Yes, G Power, Prince is another one tried to warn us. Or Diddy and his son allegedly shot someone and it was covered up by the LAPD and then the media. Within those docs, and this is where it gets relevant, there is one man that is named as being the person that can do the cleanup. So in these docs, it says, Mr. Combs instructs his staff to always contact Mr. Muhammad, that is Fahim Muhammad, if they are ever pulled over by the police in Miami or California. Diddy and his son shot someone and after that shooting, the documents say explicitly that Mr. Muhammad spoke with the LAPD after G was shot at the recording studio. The LAPD was in the recording studio and witnessed the blood in the restroom. And they went with the bogus claim that the shooting of G occurred outside of the studio. This was all thanks to Mr. Muhammad's connections. Before we move on, please remind yourself and remember this. Because they are in positions of upholding the law or what we would believe to be moral, have moral obliga obligations, don't mean they don't have a price. Money talk, bullshit, woke. Doctors can be bought. Attorneys can be bought. Judges can be bought. Police can be bought. Sheriffs can be bought. But all politicians have a price. Everybody, when you really think about it, has a price. So 
I want people to think, because I was talking about this with doctors as well, when we were talking about, oh, like, you will know the doctor. You don't know what the doctor would do. The doctor would do whatever that money said that the doctor going to do. And it sounds to me like this brother Fahim Muhammad was over there making calls like, yo, don't fuck with that. And then they people calling them saying, leave that alone. All right, bet. I'm just saying, I wanted to throw that part in there. Within law enforcement, allegedly. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? The cleanup guy, Mr. Fahim Muhammad, was also on the scene when Michael Jackson died. Also, let, let me mind you, not only was Fahim Muhammad on the scene, it was the doctor, obviously. It was a couple other people and his son. Prince Michael also was in there when he was unalive. Well, not when he well, when he wasn't alive no more. So there were more than just the doctor in there. Yes, he's the cleanup guy, Cream of Wheat. Absolutely, he's the cleanup guy. So I want to introduce you to and allow you to listen to Ian Carroll. He's an independent journalist that is investigating everything that is going on, and he explains that connection. So this new lawsuit just came out that shows tons of evidence that P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, has been running a sexual blackmail operation very much like Jeffrey Epstein, but in the rap and music industry for basically 30 years. And in that lawsuit, we learned that his head of security while he's running the sexual blackmail ring is this guy named Fahim Muhammad, who before working for Diddy was the head of security for Michael Jackson when he was only 21. And he was one of the first people on the scene when Michael Jackson died. And before we go to Michael Jackson, the most important part of the Diddy case to bring across is the fact that the record executives at the very top knew what P. Diddy was doing. They Have y'all ever wondered or scratched your head and said, how is it that all these celebrities die from overdoses? These bitches ain't jumping off the bridge. They ain't getting popped outside the studios no more. All these celebrities is dying from overdoses. Have y'all ever thought about that? Put a one in the chat. Even if this, I'm talking about the smallest chat to the biggest celebrity. Smallest celebrities to the biggest. Y'all never wonder why all these motherfuckers going out the same way? Put a one in the chat if you ever thought about that. Because I know I think about every single time they announce one. I be like, dang, this one too? Who wasn't on drugs? And because people associate sex, drug, and rock and roll with the doggone industry, people just go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Girl, how many people done came out and said, my people ain't did a drug a day in their life? What the fuck you mean, OD? But they all drunk. They all dying of ODs, girl. It's crazy. They were attending the parties with underage girls where they were spiking drinks. They were deeply involved in Diddy's personal life. And all evidence points to them supporting his operation. Listen. Listen, listen. One thing this clear man said that stood out to me. The moguls and the people above them knew exactly what the entire F was going on they know you think they didn't they, you think the people didn't know what diddy was doing out there they know they okayed it some of them partook they know and this is why i tell you i i squint my eye at this whole raid because i'm like okay what are we rating for to find information or to hide certain information or both like what are we what like Mind you, if Diddy got cameras all over, you don't think none of them caught on this? Yeah. So with that being said, they don't want to, they want him to go down, but they don't want to go down too. So they gotta shift it straight to Diddy. And also, hey, go get Homeland Security and all of them to go in there and take this, destroy that, bring me this, keep that. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. Come on now. So the man Fahim Muhammad was also linked with uh with Michael Jackson. They always have one, and it's always a Negro in your camp. It's been since the beginning of time. They always infiltrate you with you. They always infiltrate your, your shit with somebody who looks like you to make you less suspecting. I'm not saying the Muhammad dude is, is guilty or nothing, but I'm just saying one plus one is given two. Yes, um, Katrina. Yes, for 21 years. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. See, that's how the, that's how them people work. They slow stroke it. They don't they don't just uh, 
They slow stroke you, baby. They got to be around. You got to learn to trust these folk. Y'all ain't heard about that black dude in the 80s who came out and talked about how he was on the doggone infiltration plan for the uh, Black Panthers and how they had caught him and was trying to give him a five years or something for some simple robbery or whatever the fuck it was. And then it turns out he would, got close as close as he could to all these folk down there in the, um, in the Panther Party all to get them fucked up. And he said he could never come back to him. Girl, please. Y'all got to be strong now. Oh, yeah, Solo. Right. Cat Williams said the clear folk going to cover their back as their money. Yes. they And they're not going to lose no money. They're not going to lose no money. Don't get me started on Stokely. Mimi, don't get me started on Stokely. This ain't Educational Friday. You know, Listen, Mimi, girl, look, Stokely, a whole nother story. But you know what I'm saying? Yes, Quan, chestnut checkers. Absolutely, chestnut checkers. So, yes, there is a connection between this guy, Fahim Muhammad, with Diddy. Ask yourself why. And somebody else said it, it's either drugs or aneurysm. Some shit that nobody can't even. Some shit that you can't look at and be like, that's what did it. Oh, yes, Deborah. Yes, Stokely Carmichael. Yes. Pull up for Educational Friday. We'll discuss further. I found some OT out on him. Stokely Carmichael. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Pull up on Fridays if you're interested for uh, Educational Friday where we talk about things of that nature. Fridays at 5 p.m. Eastern, Educational Friday where we speak about things of Stokely Carmichael's nature. Not, not the hint of that. That's not what this stream about. This stream not about that. You know, the stream is not about that. I know you're going to be that, Deborah. All right. But listen, there's a coincidence that there's a, a connection. That's all I'm saying. And y'all know me. I don't believe in coincidence. Nothing happens by happenstance. It's all planned and prepared. Now, let's go back to Diddy. I mean, 50. 50 still trolling. Now he done moved the Jigga. Jigga. What's my motherfucking name? Jigga. And who I'm rolling with, huh? My nigga. He says, here is Jay-Z, last reporter scene, waving at Puffy Jet. <laughs> Girl, I cannot. Now, Jay done, Jay done grew his hair out. Now, I ain't gonna lie. I'm not no stand, so I'm gonna call it like it is. Jay-Z hands ain't clean either. And I say what I see. Hands ain't clean. Say what I see. The people want his head on the swivel next. Oh, yeah, Williams, that's another one. Cancer, too. They use cancer. They use cancer as another one. But the people want Jigga's head on the swivel next. I'm, the, I'm saying the same thing she knows. I'm like, 50 must have a squeaky clean ass pass the way he going in. Let me see. There's more. Look at the milk carton, y'all. If you old enough, you understand the milk carton. You got to be born in the 80s or early to mid-90s to understand this, this post right here. Mid-90s on back, you might not understand what's happening right now. Mid-90s on the way back, you may not understand what's happening right now. Anybody from the mid-90s on back understood all of the missing children was on the back of the, mis the milk cartons, couldn't even enjoy your milk. But I never drank it anyway, so it didn't matter to me. You know what I'm saying? They done put my nigga Jigga on the milk carton, girl, in his suit and tie, in his Sunday's best, on the girl. <sighs> you can't make this shit up. <laughs> they done put my nigga Jigga on the milk carton, girl. This is big. Y'all know how the milk carton was. If you was born in 94, I would say, on back, you understood the milk carton reference. All the children who was missing in the neighborhood went on the back of the milk carton. Why they got Jigga back there? Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Now, this is AI. For all of you guys who are wondering, this right here is AI. This is not real. This is not Donald Trump saying this. 
This is AI. Y'all say no sound. Y'all don't hear this? It was on there. Did y'all hear that? No. Can't hear it. All right. Let me let me stop sharing and reshare it. Hold on. It was on there. I heard it on my end. I want y'all to hear this. Mind you, this is AI. Like I said, it's not real, but it was funny nonetheless. Put a one in the chat if you just heard that after I reshared it. Put a one in the chat if you just heard it so I could know to keep going. No, you still couldn't hear it? Hmm. Hold on, let me try one more time. I don't know why it's playing on my end. Still nothing? Nope. We can't hear it. We can only hear you. Oh, wow. Hold on. Let me do this. 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 Let me try one more time. I'm going to exit out and then I'm going to go back in. It's funny, though. It's AI, it's not real, but let's <laughs> let's go back and see, girl. This is a time. Oh, what a time. Let me know. Still no. No, god damn. I don't know what else to do. Shit, let me close the whole window then. Shit. Hold on, I'm gonna close the whole window and come back. This is the time. Who you telling? I'm about to close the whole window and come back. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Girl, 50 is a troll's paradise. Do you hear me? Now, hold on, I'm, I'm going back in, y'all. I'm going back in. Sorry, we're going to try one more time. One more again. If it don't work this time, it ain't meant to be heard. My business is my business. It ain't to be heard. My niggas is my niggas, so you don't say a word. Now, you don't touch my shit. You don't drive my shit. I got dope in the house, and I hide my shit. Got bad nerves. I hope you don't try my shit. Do right and nice things. I'm going to buy my bitch. Some bitches just got up there with the long. Let me stop. This ain't about juvenile. This is not about juvie. Let's get back to the show. Um, I'm going to try one more time. If y'all can't hear it this time, I don't know what to tell y'all now. Puffy. You stupid ass nigga. I told you, stop fucking with R. Kelly. I said, grab them in the pussy. Don't kidnap the pussy. They raided your shit. I see. I got a courtesy call when they raided my house. You really fucked up, up my nigga. Can I get a copy of the Meek Mill sex tape? Please, nigga. Puffy, puffy, puffy. Oh, you here. stupid okay. ass nigga. I told you, stop fucking with R. Kelly. I said, grab them in the pussy. Don't kidnap the pussy. They raided your shit. I see. I got a courtesy call when they raided my house. You really fucked up, up my nigga. Can I get a copy of the Meek Mill sex tape? Please, nigga. Puffy, puffy, puffy. You stupid ass nigga. I told you, stop fucking with R. Kelly. I said, grab them in the pussy. Don't kidnap the pussy. They raided your shit, I see. I got a courtesy call when they raided my house. You really fucked up, up my nigga. Can I get a copy of the Meek Mill sex tape? Please, nigga. Puffy. I think the part when he said, my nigga. <laughs> Listen. This is why you know AI is real. If y'all didn't see this video, y'all would think he really said that. You can tell by the way his mouth moving is fake, but it, it sounds so real. Listen, y'all, listen, y'all. I'm telling you. Yes, Dante official, he said, don't kidnap the coochie. That's what he said. You, you don't kidnap the coochie. Let me see him one more time. It at my house. You really fucked up, up my nigga. Can I get a copy? of the Meek Mill 
sex tape. Please, nigga. Puffy, puffy, puffy. You stupid ass nigga. I told you, stop fucking with R. Kelly. I said, grab them in the pussy. Don't kidnap the pussy. They raided your shit. I see. I got a courtesy call when they raided my house. You really fucked up, up my nigga. Can I get a copy of the Meek Mill sex tape? Black Phoenix said Kim K unfollow Puffy 24 hours for the raid. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me none. 50 Cent Caption said the world's almost over, so we are worried about. So what are we worried about? Whoever made this is fucked up. I think Trump's going to be president again, but I'm not going to say that. <laughs> it's AI, y'all. It's AI. <laughs> Special K said, please, nigga. <laughs> it's AI. It's AI. It's AI. It's on 50 Cent page if y'all want to hear it. It is AI. It's not real. It's not real. <laughs> Why y'all put Trump in this? Now what Trump's now, now how, Trump said, now how did I get in it? How did I get in it? He do say nigga too smooth though, don't he? My nigga. I was like, wait a minute. It's the way he said my nigga for me. I, you know, I don't I don't quite understand what's happening at the time. Yet and still, here we are, Trump on here giving his one, two, yin, yin, yin. Girl, all I know is this. This is what I know. Hold on. Let me see. No, we ain't going to play. We ain't going to play that. Now, what is this? Girl, it is raining like cats and dogs out here. Nigga calling Puffy Sean Epstein. Girl, y'all is crazy. Y'all going to call the man Sean Epstein? Girl, maybe it's spitting. I think we should end on this note because I want to say I was one of the people who called this part first. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Have you ever had an ice cream sandwich? Have you ever been swallowed up by clear billionaires? Have you ever been groped from the back, balls to butt, by a clear billionaire? Have you ever been sandwiched in? by clear billionaires if you have not please consult little baby and also meek millie please consult meek mills and little baby when he said dreams and nightmares i didn't know the nightmares was like this you know but at the end of the day these young brothers they are are are, are, are what we would say successful um they pay the they don't pay on the front end they pay on the back end no pun intended but they pay on the back end OK, they don't never really pay on the front end. They pay on the back end. So but they pay the price, though. That's the part is the price being paid. That is the question we need to ask ourselves. Are the prices being paid? OK. And the prices, according to what I'm looking at, are being paid in full. And well, I don't know if they have in full. It might be partially full, but nevertheless, the prices are being paid. So when y'all hear these dudes with these fire ass beats coming out here, whoop the whoop the whoop, and y'all hear the beats popping in the club, and y'all like, oh, this nigga working hard. Yes, overtime, undertime, overtime under the table. You get it? Overtime under the table on the back end. Okay. So. You know, just keep this part in mind. One more part I want y'all to keep in mind. Hold on, I gotta show y'all another part I want y'all to keep in mind because this right here has to be studied. You know, one thing about niggas, I keep telling y'all if you're new to the channel, welcome to the dollhouse. If you haven't already, just subscribe, child, because we're gonna get you some new slangs in your life. There's only one thing you can guarantee a nigga to do, and a nigga is to nigga, okay? Uh a nigga gonna always nigga. You can't. Like, there's no way to go around that. What do you mean, Voodoo? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. Hold on. Hold on. Let me go get it. I'm glad you asked. Let's go get these tings. Um, I, I don't know. Did I touch on this already before we move on? I don't think I touched on this already. Prince Harry was mentioned in this whole thing. Y'all know that's the y'all black princesses are uh, husband. Allegedly, you know the little redhead stepchild. 
before we move on to where I was going, Prince Harry has been mentioned in the $30 million lawsuit against Sean Diddy Combs of S abuse. It says the lawsuit filed by record producer Rodney Lil Jones claims Diddy's connection to celebrities, including Harry, lent legitimacy to his actions. So he's not saying Prince Harry did nothing. But if y'all heard about the Epstein Island thing, they say his paw was down there in the other, other people, allegedly. Allegedly. They say his paw was down there, so it wouldn't be far-fetched for his ass to be down there. And I'm pretty sure when he seen some real brown booty hole, not the half-brown one he got at the house. I'm talking about some real, you know, holes bouncing off the ceiling like Magic City. I'm pretty sure this right here was his action. It was the uncle. Okay, same shit, different toilet. My bad, the uncle. The uncle was spotted down there, allegedly. But I'm pretty sure when that girl walked on the ceiling and fell down on that crotch, that was his response. Allegedly. 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 Heavy on the allegedly. Now, Meek Mills. Let's get Meek Mills on here. We all know Meek Mills has been spotted uh, bending over, doing the bending for the doggone billionaires. Look, I've shared this with y'all before. Count out loud. Count out loud. Why are you doing bunny hops, Meek? Because you got your ass beat in tennis. You got your ass beat. Keep going. Count out loud. Count out loud. Huh? Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Don't cheat on your buddy hops. They suck. Your buddy hops suck. You got I used to pray for times like this to rhyme like this. So I had to grind like that to shine like this. Hmm. Here are your heroes, America. America, here are your heroes. One's being sandwiched. One is treated like an ice cream sandwich on the reverse. And the other, okay, is hopping around doing the bunny hop. And I don't mean the dance. Not the one that go, all oh, the hoes with the short thing, yes. And you got blue bee falling out your glass or whatever. Yo, man, don't want you in the club. Not that one. It's different levels to this shit. Now, to all the young brothers, to all the young sisters who aspire to be these Negroes and neglects, you too will either end up hopping around with no hang time like Meek Mills. Philly, y'all taking another L. Even though what we do is wrong. Philly, this is a, a forever L for Philly. But Philly, this is a forever L. Every time I see this, I say, even though what we do is wrong. City of brotherly love. Y'all will forever take an L for this. Meek Mills has given y'all a forever L. Also, um, he hops around with nothing to dangle, and that tells me everything I need to know. New York is in the uh in the realm of of regeneration of L's. New York, if the world went was if the world blew up and came back, New York, y'all still would be in the hole. So we don't even need to go there. From New York, I don't care. If this bitch ended right now and started over. New York, y'all still in the hole. Say what I see. Y'all still in the hole. But for this realm, Philly, even though what we do is wrong, y'all in the hole too. Listen, let me get off of here, girl. Um, Because this is a time. If you guys would like to support the channel, please like the video, girl. It's free. And if y'all don't want to do it like that and y'all want to send a couple of dollars to the dog because I am not monetized, go ahead and hit this cash app. You feel me? Shout out to everybody who sent me a cash app. Shout out to uh to just like Condi. Thank you so much for the uh, wonderful cash app. I appreciate you, my love. Uh, Lisa nine zero zero one one. Love you still. Thank you so much, Lisha. I appreciate you. Thank you, Passion two PZ for the cash app. You have me on the floor laughing. It's T Robbins. All right, T. All right, boo. Thank you, Taylor Lynn, for the cash app. I appreciate you. Who else on here? And thank you, Demetria, for the cash app. I appreciate you guys. Like I said, yes, he's definitely dagging on the low. You know, I know as a former dagger on the low, I know more than anybody. But we'll come back on another day for that. Neither here nor there. I appreciate all of you guys. You guys have been nothing short of amazing. Oh, Lisa, I didn't know you said that. Thank you, girl. 
Thank you, Lisa 90011. Thank you. I didn't know you sent that, girl. You was a generous. All right for sponsoring the day. The live. I'm sorry. But you guys, I was going to do this whole uh, thing on Rumble tonight, but I'm not going to lie. I got home from work late. So I'll get to you guys tomorrow morning and we'll discuss what we're going to do moving forward because I got to get this book for us. To, uh, if you guys haven't already, please follow me on Rumble. We do deep dives over there uh, on a lot of celebrity gossip from back in the day. Thank you, Roxy Baby, for the cash app. I uh, had to pay rent, but we'll send more next time. This is fine. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, Dante, official where you be at? We've already started the first series of Dagging on the Low. Where have you been? Check me out on the morning Joe's at the Voodoo Doll TV, okay? I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Y'all know how we roll around here. I'm a Joe Shaw in like I Joe. Well, I'm a Joe Shaw out like a Joe Shaw in. I love y'all. I'll see y'all later. Peace. Check one two one two. We live in. Come, come, come on. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Can you can you can you hear me now? Oh, let's go. Now, it's your boy Big Chu, the voice of the beat. You know what I want? Blaze up. Come on, Blaze. It's a beat for me. Wah 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 for your guy, for your boy. Drop it for your guy, for your boy. Do it for your guy, for your boy. Big back, back. Come on, baby, we are. Come on, Blaze, so you know. Drop me a nasty beat. Mr. Carroll, how you give the voodoo doll time to talk? I don't get no fucking time to talk. Who the voodoo doll is? The nigga you just had up.